We have a sequence of numbers which has first term 1, and then we're told that a n plus 1 is n plus 1 multiplied by a n plus 1, and for every positive integer n. What we want to do is compute this infinite product. The product from n is 1 to infinity of 1 plus 1 over a n. Let's dive in. What we're going to do is actually first consider a finite product, the product from 1 to m of 1 plus 1 over a n, and see what we can do with this. Well, let's just write this thing slightly differently. So this is just a n plus 1 over a n. And then we can use this formula up here and notice that we've got a n plus 1 there and also a n plus 1 there. So this is simply the product from n equals 1 to m of a n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 all over a n. Now, what's quite nice about products and multiplication is it's nice and commutative. The order doesn't matter. So in a way, I can kind of strip out all these n plus 1 terms and write this as a product of two products. So this is the product from n is 1 to m of 1 over n plus 1 multiplied by the product from n is 1 to m of a n plus 1 over a n. OK, let's deal with this first guy. 1 over n plus 1, we're multiplying from n is 1 to m. What will that give us? Well, the first term will be 1 over 2. The second term will be 1 over 3. The third term will be 1 over 4, and so on, all the way up to 1 over m plus 1. And so hopefully this is pretty clearly 1 over m plus 1 factorial. So 1 over m plus 1 factorial. Great. What about this second product here? This is really nice because loads of terms cancel out. This is going to be, if I plug in n is 1, this will be a2 divided by a1. If I plug in n is 2, this is going to be a3 divided by a2. If I plug in n is 3 now, this will be a4 divided by a3, and so on. If I do the penultimate term, so m minus 1, that will be a m over a m minus 1, multiplied by a m plus 1 over a m, like so. And now we can see a bunch of things cancel out. a2 with the a2, a3 with the a3, a4, there'd be an a4 there, and so on. a m minus 1 with an a m minus 1 there, and these two a m's. So all in all, we're just left with 1 over m plus 1 factorial multiplied by a m plus 1 over a1. But remember, a1 is just 1, and so this is just a m plus 1 over m plus 1 factorial. Amazing. So what we've got here is the product from n equals 1 to m of 1 plus 1 over a n, and we've shown that this is just a m plus 1 divided by m plus 1 factorial. So to answer this problem about what this product is, we simply need to take the limit as m goes to infinity of this expression here. So in order to compute this limit, we're going to go back to this equation up here. Let's divide both sides by n plus 1. So we get a n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 equals a n plus 1. Now here's where the magic happens. What we're going to do on both sides is divide by n factorial. So if I do that on the right-hand side, I get a n divided by n factorial plus 1 over n factorial, like so. And on the left-hand side, I've got a n divided by n plus 1. So if I divide that by n factorial, that's going to give me n plus 1 multiplied by n factorial. But n plus 1 times n factorial is simply n plus 1 factorial. Amazing. So we've got that a n plus 1 factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial is simply a n divided by n factorial. Cool. Let's bring this up here. So a n plus 1 over n factorial. And what I'm going to do is subtract a n over n factorial from both sides. And I get that this is equal to 1 over n factorial. OK, cool. Why is this useful? Well, remember, this equation is true regardless of what value of n I choose. Um, oh, so this is supposed to be n plus 1 factorial there. Whoops. Um, so this is true regardless of what value of n I choose. So I'm going to take this equation and replace all the n's with n minus 1's. So this is going to become a n, and this is going to become n factorial. So I've just replaced those n's with n minus 1's. This thing here will be a n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial, and this will be 1 over n minus 1 factorial. OK, I'm going to do the same thing again, but instead of replacing the n's with n minus 1's, I'm going to replace the n's with n minus 2's in this equation. So this will be a n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial minus a n, uh, sorry, a n minus 2 over n minus 2 
factorial equals one over n minus two factorial, like so. And I'm going to keep doing this, replacing the n's with kind of one less value each time, all the way until I get down to, um, let's go down to n equals one in this thing here. And we're going to get a2 over two factorial minus a1 over one factorial equals one over one factorial, like so. So we've got a bunch of equations here, all of which are true. And we're going to get another moment of magic. And if you've seen telescoping sums, sums before, you probably know what, where this is going. I'm going to add up all of these equations in one go. And if we look at the left-hand sides here, if I add these all up, we're going to get a bunch of cancellations. This cancels with that. So a n over n factorial, a n over n factorial. One's a negative, one's a positive. They're going to cancel. Same thing here. Those will cancel. This will cancel with a term there. And we're going to get a bunch of cancellations. A2 over 2 factorial will cancel with something up there. So on the left-hand side, I'm left with a n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial minus a1 over 1 factorial. But again, a1 is 1, 1 factorial is 1. So I can just put that as minus 1. And on the right-hand side, what do I get? Well, I get 1 over n factorial plus 1 over n minus 1 factorial and so on, all the way up to 1 over 1 factorial, like so. OK, cool. Now, if I bring this one onto this side and replace the n's with m's, I get a m plus 1 over m plus 1 factorial equals 1 over n factorial, or 1 over m factorial, plus 1 over m minus 1 factorial, and so on, all over 1 over 1 factorial. And I guess this one here I can write as 1 over 0 factorial. Here we go. We're now going to take the limit as m goes to infinity. And this thing here, if we take m to infinity, this thing here just approaches e. Just kind of by definition of the Taylor series sum for the expansion of e to the x, or maybe this is how you define e. But this is a very famous infinite series that approaches e.